Greet everyone, the youth, with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Our topic is a fellowship and a time council. I invite you to read it. as a group, the text that will be in the projection, which is First John, John chapter 1, First John 1, verse 7, verse 7. Can we do the, the projection? Let's read. Let's read. In the Bible, 1 John 1, 7. But, together, but if we walk in the light, and He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses from all sin. The pastor already spoke that the time called Son is a special moment. It's a moment that precedes the coming of the Lord Jesus. He explained that in the original word Son, it means a time appropriate and special for the arrival of the Messiah. And it means also a time that is appropriate for the establishment of the judgment. The glorious coming of the Lord Jesus, my brethren, is the point, the highest point of the entire biblical doctrine. And that's why the Lord is emphasizing this work in relation to the book of Revelations so that we can study the book of Revelations so we can understand the Revelations of the study of Revelations because the book was written for this moment called uh, time called soon the glorious arrival of the Lord Jesus is the highest point of uh, the faithful church it's going to be the most amazing day and magnific of the history of humanity the doctrine of the coming of the Lord Jesus is the greatest doctrine of the Word. We are having this privilege of living a time that is amazing. And the prophetic moment and the Word of God is categoric when it speaks about the coming of the Lord Jesus. Where the Lord says that Jesus will come back personally in a visible way, all of a sudden, unexpectedly in a victorious way and glory in a glorious way this message of the coming of the Lord Jesus the apostolic church became ambassadors of this message but the message of the second coming of Jesus began in the Old Testament the prophet of the Old Testament prophesied much more about the second coming of Jesus than the first arrival of Jesus not to nourish the faith, nor to nourish the hope in this glorious promise. One of the legacies that the Lord Jesus left for the church after the resurrection was the fellowship. The fellowship. There is, my brethren, at this moment called soon, there is an opposition. There is a, a, a union that conspire against the fellowship, conspires against faith, conspires against faithfulness, conspires against holiness, conspires against what the Holy Spirit wants to realize in the life of each one of us. This group, this agreement is the seduction of modernity, liberalism, and the secularization of the word. It's an, a, an agreement, it's an, a union. But the text that we just read says the following. But if we walk in the light, what light? What, is this? what light is this? The light in which He is, who? Jesus. If we walk in, G in the light in the same way as He is, we have fellowship. What fellowship? What type of fellowship is this that the Bible is speaking? The fellowship 
of uh, having uh, dinner with the brother after the service? Is the fellowship of going on on a trip together? No, there's nothing wrong with that. But that's not the fellowship that the the Bible speaks to. Because the world does this. The world has it. If we walk in the light, if we walk in the revelation, in the same way, in way as Jesus is, we have fellowship with one another. Fellowship for what? Fellowship so Jesus can reveal himself so those that, who are in this revelation, which is an action, which is an operation of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is revealing himself to them as the fellowship so that we can love one another. Is a fellowship so that we can uh, withstand the weaknesses of one another. Is a fellowship to forgive seven, seventy times seven. Is the fellowship to cry with those who cry. Is a fellowship to be stoned and see the open heavens. Are you being stoned? Are you being criticized? Are you being attacked in college? Are you being called uh, Mr. Bible? Are you being called square? Are you? Are you being called a uh, backward person? But the heavens are open for you. The heavens are open to those to those who to throw the stone, who don't want to criticize. The heavens are closed, but for you, the heavens are open. And in this fellowship that emanates from light, that proceeds from Jesus, which is generated by the Holy Spirit, there is no room for disagreement. There is no competition in this fellowship. In this fellowship with the Holy Spirit, there is no room for resentment, for bitterness. There is no room for spiritual bullying. The more we have this true fellowship, the better we will live the essence of the gospel. The fellowship is so we can live the essence of the gospel. It's not to live uh, like a, a label of Christianity. The fellowship that the Holy Spirit generates is to have to live the essence of the gospel. If we walk in the light, we have fellowship. Walk is dynamic because it's a path. Light is light is life because without light, there's no life. Fellowship is because only in fellowship, the truth prevails. So it's it's the path, truth, and life. Only in fellowship we can find the, the way. Only in fellowship the, the truth remains. Only in fellowship we can find eternal life. The light is the path the, to over the revealed doctrine. The light is the path to revealed word. The light is what brings you, brings you to the genuine fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In this fellowship, you don't make mistakes. If you want this fellowship, you have to choose this fellowship. If you want this fellowship, you don't make mistakes. Why don't you make mistakes? Because you are in the light, and in light everything is clear. Every time in the light, everything is very uh, visible. There is no shadow in the light. There is no variation. In, there is no darkness. There is no nothing is is dark when you are in the light. In the light, you don't make mistake. I'm going to touch a topic that the youth like because the Lord has shown that this class was going to be different than the classes from the seminar. You want to do right in your marriage? You want to do it right in your marriage? Walk in the light. Don't stand still in the light. Walk in the light. Remain in fellowship. The patterns and biblical principles that the Bible speaks about marriage may not be modern, but they are the foundation of the eternal. If you walk in the light, if you walk in fellowship, your heart will submit to the manual of the manufacturer, the one who instituted the marriage, which is God. Your heart will not going to submit and uh, to the influence of the world that is out there. The word of the Lord has an ordinance. It's an order. Is not an advice or suggestion. The word of the Lord has an order. Man will leave his father and mother, and he will unite with his wife. It's an order, and women get married to a man. Don't get married with uh, 
a child is an order, order is a commandment from the Lord. The youth should have glorified. <laughs> but Pastor, how is that possible? Getting married, how is this? Getting married with a man. Get married with a man according to the biblical pattern. Get married with a man that has commitment with the faith. Get married with a man who will have spiritual leadership inside of the house. Get married to a man that can uh, take responsibilities. Get married to a man that has integrity and character of seriousness with the patterns and uh, values of the word of the Lord. Get married with a man that has already um, a financial stability to protect the home. Does he have these values according to the word of the Lord? He is already a man. He doesn't need to be rich. He needs to be a man. Youth. Get married to a virtuous woman. But how do I know that she is virtuous, Pastor? Read Proverbs 31. You'll find out uh, uh, how a virtuous woman is. When Isaac uh, met Rebecca, it was the first thing that he saw was not her, the color of her eyes. When Isaac met Rebecca, the first thing that he saw was the biblical beauty, was the veil, was the beauty of her holiness was the beauty of her te testimony, was the beauty of a servant of the Lord. What beauty is more most important for you? Is the biblical beauty or the beauty of the human body? She honors the father and mother. The woman you want to get married to, does she honor the father and mother? Does she honor the, the church? Is she respectful to father and mother? Because she's not respectful to the father and mother that gave her life, gave food, sacrificed for her. Who can guarantee you that she's going to be a virtuous woman in marriage? Does she look like a servant of God? Oh, Pastor, I'm sorry. But times have changed. That's true. Times have changed. But the Holy Spirit has not changed. God has not changed. His word has not changed. If we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And we have love for one another. We forgive one another. We withstand one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ purifies us of every sin. The fellowship is the element, is the fundamental element in the spiritual life fellowship is the essential element to nourish your faith to strengthen the hope to rise up all of those that need uh, renewal this afternoon do you feel alone sometimes? Do you feel like you are alone? So how many times you pray? For how long have you been praying and haven't heard any answer? We may even feel like we are alone. Because we are not super uh, Christian, uh, superman. We may, might feel like we are alone, but we are not alone. Why, pastors? Pastor, because the word of the God that you serve is 
is upon your life. And the word says that whenever we no longer have strength, when we are weak, the Holy Spirit give us help in our weaknesses. It translate our weaknesses and translate our necessities and translate our anguishes and translate our uncertainty. According to the Bible, he translates it into a mourning, this unexpressible mourning. And that's why I'm here. And that's why you are there. And that's why many are in the presence of the Lord. And that's why you continue. And that's why you will overcome. And that's why you will glorify. And that's why you praise the name of the Lord. And that's why you praise in the name of the Lord. You may feel alone, but you're not alone. The Holy Spirit is, is with you. The Holy Spirit is a counselor. The Holy Spirit is interceding on your behalf. The Holy Spirit is interceding on, uh, on behalf of your family. The Holy Spirit is interceding on behalf of your marriage, interceding on, be, on behalf of your father and your mother and your school, intercede on behalf of our weaknesses. We are not superhumans. We are not super servants. We are weak and needy. But the Lord takes care of me, takes care of us. The Holy Spirit is with us. This fellowship generates hope. This fellowship re regenerates renewal. This fellowship re generates joy. This fellowship generates glorification. This fellowship generates gratitude. Let us stand up. Let us glorify the name of the Lord. Let us praise His name because God is with us. And if God is with us, who will be against us? Blessed glorified be the name of the Lord. It's good to hear the things from eternity, Lord. Continue blessing us in the name of Jesus. Amen.